Excellent. Holly. I'd like to know a little bit more about <clears throat> efficient ways to get at numerous um, uh, book bloggers. Is everybody maintaining their own lists, or are there good search engines for these things? How do you, how do you find the right bloggers for particular <coughs> I think there's a lot of different ways. I mean, one way would be to look on Technorati, top 100 bloggers in a certain area, and then roll up your sleeves and, you know, contact or, or research their names, find out their names, and try and build a database yourself. There's people who are running paid blog tours. They can range anywhere from $600 to $6,000, depending on how in-depth you want to get. Those can guarantee you um, review spots, they can guarantee you, um, you know, more added value, an interview with the blogger, a guest post, those kinds of things. Um, you know, through Google AdWords, you could be serving up ads, um, display ads to blogs of your choice once you find out what are the ones you want. So, I mean, I think there's so many ways in, and, um, you know, those are, those, that's just the tip of the iceberg, but those are some of the tried and true. Did you get that? There's a lot of good content in that answer. Thank you. That was a great answer. Also, sometimes if you do have uh, the phone numbers, which can be hard to get, but you know, using certain databases, you can, especially for the large blocks. Calling people is a novelty now because everybody emails, and yeah. And so recently, when I you know I've made a couple of phone calls, I've gotten contests, promotions, whatnot. People are happy to talk to me as long as they don't call them multiple times. So, um, you know, definitely use with caution and whatnot, but that, that can definitely help you reach bloggers. Watch out for time zones and, and mommy bloggers who are diapering their kids <laughs> when they call. Um, I, I, I want to just briefly go beyond the, um, the, uh, the idea of public service and offering information and of helping people is the key to social etiquette and selling. However, then the question comes up to dig a little deeper is specifically per title, how do you sell each book to the audience that's interested in it? It's easier to do that with nonfiction books because there's usually a topic or a subject and they're well organized online or you know what they're interested in and what original material you have to offer. With fiction, it's much more challenging. How do you sell a fiction book by offering information that isn't just chunks of the book itself? For example, Tolstoy. How could he sell <laughs> war and peace online? And I, I thought about this because Tolstoy is a very interesting guy. And he, when he started writing War and Peace, he kept changing it, going back and going back and going back, trying to cram in all the information that he kept discovering through his own research and where his characters were taking him. And I thought that, well, he could have, he could have a little uh, background about you know, Napoleon's amazing uh, culinary demands during the siege of Moscow. This is well documented, but it's not in his book. Or maps, maps of the battle. I mean, seriously, interactive maps. Uh, there's a book that just came out about uh, Hemingway. It's called uh, The Paris Wife. And on her website, the author's website, I can't remember her name, it's a wonderful website, there's a timeline of all of Hemingway's life, all the major events of his life. That kind of material that isn't in the book, but enhances the reading of the book, is a way to sell fiction in this case. Or Tolstoy could talk about the, um, the strange sort of um, uh, psychological and, and cultural um, requirements of, a, of Pierre, you know, the wealthy landowner in his desire to be an egalitarian, which is exactly what Tolstoy was personally, a very rich man who wanted to be kind and benign to his peasants, but wanted them to remain peasants. So, you know, this kind of, if you were doing, if you were doing Moby Dick, you could do a, a book on of contemporary advertisements for whale oil lamps. Seriously, there were such things, and so forth. I'm being a little silly, but there are ways that I think each book can be enhanced uh, in, in a unique manner that takes a lot of creativity that a publicist can suggest to a writer. So that's just another way to go. Yeah. yeah I, I wanted to elaborate on that. David and I speak at writer conferences, and we deal with a lot of people that are up and coming, non-fiction writers, and we have a lot of people that are up and coming, novelists, and many that are writing you know, fiction. And the question is always, how do we get interviews? Because if it's fiction, if you're not necessarily interested in the topic, why would you 
you know, want to interview the author. And there's always interesting springboards. For instance, I'm working on a book um, that Adrian had to refer to me called Chain Reaction. Chain and one Reaction. Of the chain Reaction. One of the main focuses of the book is doping in the cycling world. So we picked up a lot of interviews because the tour de France was on. He's a sports psychologist. He's a cyclist for over 30 years, tentatively competitively. He's in his 60s. Uh, he also wrote a book called Forty Something. He's known as Dr. Baby Boom. So he, you, you promote the author. What's interesting about him? What's his personal story? And what made him write this type of a book? And the fact that you know so much about Lance Armstrong. 60 Minutes. The uh, teammate of Lance Armstrong said we cheated together. That was a big story. So we got he sprang for the local interviews because he's a local expert about biking. And he's got a, he's got a novel, but he hasn't really been able to do well because. You know, you springboard whether it's a current event or something that's going on. There's always a way to, to, to tie it in. You know, uh, just from you mentioning Tol Tolstoy, it made me think of Jonathan Franzen, because um, he would like to be our modern day Tolstoy. Um, and his most recent book, that of course I'm blanking on the title, even though I've read it Freedom, Freedom. Um, you know, I, he didn't do that much publicity around it, personally. Um, and he didn't try anything really gimmicky. I mean, he went on a couple of NPR shows. I mean, granted, he challenged Oprah. So, you know, he, you know, already, you know, but I, I don't really know if that was gimmicky or not. I mean, as a publicist, you're always cynical. But um, I think there's something to be said for the 95-5%, you know? And sometimes a story is just really good. And I think that so you can try every single gimmick out there, but if the story isn't good, if what you're providing isn't good, there's nothing you can do, you know? I'm sure you've experienced that as a marketer. Yes. Okay. You think there's something we can still do? With? No, no, I'm sorry. I have like a, a totally okay, great question. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I've been like stuck on um, how uh, people might go out, go about like, doing outreach for things that only exist digitally, like if there is no physical book, um, excerpts, uh, like the violin or person was talking about how do you who do you do outreach for to like if it's just like an article um, and not like a whole book that could be reviewed and there's no physical thing to send someone. Um, yeah, even if, even though we are all online and, and um, electronic, we're still publicity is critical for what we're doing and, and um, one thing we've done is we'll make a PDF version of the of the title and send it to folks that you know, mommy bloggers. In the case of the uh, IVF story, Holly Finn's <clears throat> story, and um, um, for John Krakauer's piece, actually, we had it, an odd thing. It was a, a requirement Mr. Krakauer put on us that actually I think helped us uh, in the long run. Was it was free for three days. You could download the PDF file of it because he wanted the story to get out uh, about Mortensen, and so it was free for three days and. You know, the folks who really wanted it got it for free in that period of time, but then other folks heard about it and wanted to buy it. So in retrospect, maybe that's a good you know, promotional tool to help people kind of hear about something, and um, we may do that again in the future. Um, but to the earlier point about, you know, just the, the grunt work you still have to do to go find all these people who are experts in the category that you care about and reach out to them politely and send them an advanced copy, um, uh, and, and let them know about the story. We're, we're still doing that even though it's electronic. Um, and we do, you know, I, I, ironically, we suffer from, you know, we don't have that walking billboard of a book walk, you know, for anyone to see. And that's one advantage of physical books is you see someone reading on the subway and you hear about it and uh, we don't have that advantage. So uh, we've got to maybe all the more reach out to folks and, and uh, uh, let them know. Um, we have also done a little bit of serialization. The, the Holly Finn piece was in, um, um, the Daily Beast, and um, we had a piece in the Atlantic, and they'll do the, these <clears throat> do take you know they're ten or thirty thousand words, so an excerpt is still can be s r r substantial enough to read, and so we've had a few uh, successes with 
little bit of, of, of sampling. So you were able to get it into the Atlantic, the, the actual edition of the paper reel? It was, no, it was just the electronic version. The electronic, which online, is pretty, Atlantic. yeah, like 4 yeah. million yeah. readers or something monthly. Um, they pay for it? Yeah, the, uh, I guess the, the first serial one was, we just did something in the Wall Street Journal for Holly Finn's piece. That was first serial and they actually did pay for it. Um, and then the Daily Beast did another piece um, of ours and also that was first serial. Um, so it's been a mix of, here's something for free. <laughs> in a couple of cases it was actually first serial that we were paid for. How many, how many units did you give away the first three days of the Krakauer book? 70,000 copies. 70,000? Yeah. yeah, and three days. And after that? Um, about an equal number. Equal number. Yeah, have sold, right. you know. I mean, now it's on Krakauer, <laughs> it and it, it had yeah. a, yeah, but it, I think it, it still worked for us.